Hi there guys, I hope you're all well, I'm feeling a lot better than I was since my last outing. <laughs> um, I just got to grab trusty pen <clears throat> and uh, I'll talk to you about what's going on with this video. So, this video is kind of part repair video for people wanting to redo their vac lines and uh, part an extension of the first video regarding components and operation on a Peerberg. So um, the first half of this video is going to be just quick fire reference of where these vac lines go um, in relation to the rest of the carburetor and then the second part is going to be where they go in relation to what they do and why they go where they go basically. So once I'd got my head around the vac lines on the Peerberg, I understood the way the whole carburetor worked better as a result. Um, obviously the vacuum lines on, on the Peerberg is it's alpha and omega to the operation of the of the carburetor to be honest with you. Um, and and that's why I I wanted to do this video to help her to help you all out, as it were. Apologies that this isn't in my usual format, I thought it'd be best to put you on a stand. Well, I say a stand, it's a piece of masking tape. It's a roll of masking tape, a roll of gaffer tape. And uh, one of those weird little goo cheesecake pots that you get from Tesco's. Um, <laughs> that I use for storing bolts in. Anyway, let's get cracking. So, the quickest and easiest thing I can say when it comes to redoing all your vacuum hoses is this is assuming by the way that you have no hoses on the back because sometimes peerbugs come through they've already been faffed about with by someone they've ballsed it up or they've given up on it and so they've already ripped all these hoses off or, you, or they may the rubber pipes tend to crack and they gradually will wear until they they do break off and it, it can be hard to tell when more than three or four of them have done it it can be hard to tell where they all went. So I recommend starting at the bottom of the carb and working your way up to the top. And the reason for this being is the top port is a fresh air port. Um, so and and the bottom port is where the process begins. So I'm just gonna tuck that electrical connector under there. Right. So first things first, this bottom port you can see these little ringlets around the um, round the ports. They're not always there, but they are handy. They're your map of the world when it comes to where things go. They're like a quick reference. However, they're not always there. People get in here with a screwdriver and try and pry the vac lines off and snap them, or they just generally get brittle, and as soon as they're disturbed, they flake apart. Um, but for the most part, I'd imagine you're probably going to have them on there. Which is good because I'm going to be talking in terms of the colour of the lines. Um, just to make it easier for you to see what I mean in case I, I can't see what you're seeing. So, very, very bottom. This brown port here is your main vacuum inlet for the three point unit, okay? So, that brown line travels up behind the yellow line, just to give you some perspective, up behind the yellow line to a Y piece. Then there's a uh, smooth curve round into the right hand port on the bottom of the Peerberg and that's very important because these two ports are drilled out to different internal diameters um, to give you a different vacuum draw and it can cause you all kinds of salty problems if you, um, if you get them mixed up. Going back to the Y piece, the other line goes up to, again to give you some perspective, it goes behind the blue line onto the TTV. So this is the thermo time valve and that's the brown line taken care of. Again this is just quick fire so that you can see where they go to repair your carb. Yellow line, dead simple, goes straight round. Make sure if you're taking the old pipe off you save this plastic spacer because that can stop your um, back hose getting damaged against the manifold. Um, gentle sweep round and that goes into the side of the overrun cutoff solenoid. Uh, let me move that down, there we go. So that goes into the side of the overrun cutoff solenoid. From the TTV, you go up to a T piece, and then the T piece will go off forwards, as it were, towards the front of the carburetor and down 
into this blue port on the top of the overrun cutoff solenoid. I apologise for the camera angle by the way guys, it's the best I can do in this situation but it's better than you get in motion sickness from my diabolical camera skills. And then coming back onto that T-piece, you've got this final line that goes out to fresh air. So that is the basic layout of these vac hoses. This guy here goes to the air box. You saw me plug that in in the last Peerberg video. Um, that one, goes. normally it goes on this rigid line, which I took off just so you could see better, things better because it was swooshing around and getting in the way. This guy goes to the, the rearmost port of the air box. As you fit the, the air box on top of the carburetor, take in mind the front of the car is that way. That goes on the rearmost port on the side of the air box. Again, we're going to go into the Y in a minute. Also, you've got your second stage vacuum throttle um, here. There is a, a little node at 45 degree angle in behind y'all. Just there. <laughs> um, and that, that controls your second stage vacuum operated throttle butterfly. Okay, so if there was any confusion before, Hopefully that's alleviated it. Um, of course, if you get any questions or anything, just pop them in the comments. But that's that for where they go. Now, why they go there. This is the important bit. If you want to learn how to repair Peerberg carburetors, you need to know this bit. Because this is where you get the understanding from. So when it starts playing up, you can go, Oh, that seems to me like it's X, Y issue. And that will be caused by one of two components. You know exactly where to go. You could just go straight there and test them. So, we'll start as though the car were stone cold. First, first start in the morning. You wind the engine over. And vacuum is drawn in through this line. Okay. which So it would be drawing vacuum that way, if that makes sense. The vacuum is travelling into the carburetor. Now, to make it simpler, I think of it as flow towards the part. It's just easier to trace things out that way. But whatever works for you. Um, basically, from here on in, just reverse everything I'm saying. If if the if the route towards the carburetor thing is easier for you to remember, just reverse what I'm saying. So anyway, long story short, this guy at the bottom is drawing vacuum when the engine fires up from this port here. Now, when your TTV is open, i.e. cold start, Remember I said about the rod being extended all the way? What happens is that you've got to imagine these two lines as performing two separate functions. Kind of like a mode. They, they're, they're different modes of operation. When the car's cold, the vacuum coming through here is defeated by this pipe here. And the reason for that is the TTV, when it's open, allows the draw of fresh air atmospheric pressure it's not it's not at um it's not a vacuum it's not a depression so the fresh air coming in through this line defeats that vacuum right which causes the rod to extend fully because there's no vacuum sucking the rod back in then once this gets up to temperature and closes it shuts itself off i've dropped trusty pen forgive me trusty pen it shuts itself off completely closes and blocks these lines once it does that this line here and this line here have done their job so they've clocked off for the day and then that leaves just this line here the curved line now that curved line obviously is able to draw a vacuum in to the three four point unit which pulls the rod back but If you were to just have vacuum and nothing else contributing to the three four point unit, it would draw it all the way back in, which as we know from the last video is our overrun cutoff position. So we don't want that, we want the idle position. Where it's just protruding enough to, to hold an idle speed. And it does that with this solenoid here. The way it does that is that, as you can see, the space in here is very small between the yellow port and the blue port. The reason for that is you've got, say you've got, um, I don't know, uh, rather than talking scientific stuff, we'll just use a basic figure. Say you've got 
10 vacuum going in that line there, right? 10 vacuum will pull the 3 4 point unit all the way back to withdraw all the way. Now you need to extend it slightly, so what you're going to have to do is take some vacuum away. The way to take vacuum away is to add atmospheric pressure. That's what the yellow line does. So the yellow line, while the ignition is turned on, this solenoid will open... I'm just going to pull that off so it's out of your way. Sorry guys. I'm an experienced YouTuber. Um, that yellow line there allows fresh atmospheric pressure air in. Okay. So say, yeah, so say you've got 10 vacuum for argument's sake. I know it's not a scientific unit, but say you've got 10 vacuum and you're bringing in, say, well, say, keep it simple, say 5 air, right? 5 air will take 5 vacuum away. And so that causes the cylinder to sit at halfway, right? That's your idle position. So that is, again, all this blue line does. This blue line just provides fresh air to the vacuum equipment to give you a, a variable um, amount of, of vacuum operation. So this solenoid now is when you turn the ignition on you can tell it's working because it makes an almighty click under the bonnet and it really does go when that happens this opens okay when it's when it's powered it opens when it's unpowered it closes so when it opens, it allows air in. When you turn your engine off, as you know, engines spin down. They don't just stop dead. So you turn your ignition off. There's no more power to this, and it closes, which seals this line off. When that closes, the engine's still spinning down means the pistons are still moving in the cylinders, drawing vacuum at the, at the base of the carb. So you get this sudden rush of vacuum increase and it goes up to using our previous analogy it goes up to 10 vacuum and that sucks the rod all the way into the three four point unit giving you your your cutoff position now i've heard people say and i've read it in manuals i'm not sure to be honest with you i've not it's you'd have to have your head under the bonnet over 1200 rpm to know but basically this is also supposed to operate over 1200 RPM when you take your foot off the throttle. Now, how it, how it tells that is anybody's guess. I trust it to have been doing that, that's fine. But basically it does the same thing that it does when you turn the engine off, but it's to shut the throttles up completely and stop it from dribbling fuel into the, into the engine when you don't need to because you're you're decelerating so there's no need for fuel to be entering the engine at that point so that's why all that stuff does what it does so just to reiterate obviously the three four point unit draws vacuum in for there so you have zero vacuum on the cold start thanks to the TTV the TTV closes this is open so that's five vacuum for your idle position and then when you turn your engine off this closes, which gives a sudden increase to say 10 vacuum and draws the cylinder all the way in. And that's that really is how simple the operation of a Peerberg is. I'm sorry if I've not explained it in a very um, concise way or if I've made it complicated. If I have, give me a shout because obviously I'm new to doing this. But I hope that helps anyway. So we've already talked about where why that port goes where that port goes to the airbox, but we'll talk about why. That port draws vacuum into the flap on your airbox. If you've got a stock airbox, um, when you look at the airbox, there'll be one port that comes from the back of the carburetor, one port that goes to the flap on the on the airbox. And the reason for that is, basically, they call them on the on the forum. They call them sniffers. Um, they they sniff the air basically for temperature. And if the air is um, if the air's too cold, there's a little bimetallic strip in there, and the valve opens, which, when cold, obviously will allow vacuum into the flap. That vacuum sucks the flap open, closing off the cold inlet and allowing air to come off of the exhaust manifold. It's not exhaust gas; it's just um, heat, hot air from the manifold. 
you basically got a tin cover bolted to the exhaust manifold with a tube on the end and some ducting and it just sucks warm air up from that but obviously you don't want that to happen all the time where you'll get crap fuel efficiency and a variety of other things um, so then you can and, and low power too so as the air warms up it warms the valve up and it closes and drops the flap and allows cold air in and anywhere in between it can mix and match um, depending so there's that you vacuum operated throttle butterfly. I'll, I'll get onto this now, just so I don't want to overstay my welcome. Um, right, yeah, while I'm here, I'm going to tackle this. So, this is your stage 2 vacuum operated throttle. Now, if I pop that back hose off, I'm going to lie, I cheat. I, I'm going to tell you, I cheated a little bit. Um, I don't want to lie to you. I, I pulled that off beforehand because, my god, are they awkward to get off, and I didn't want to be effing and blinding at it. I'm just going to attach this here to show you how it works. It's pretty simple, you've probably already guessed, but just for anybody who's still getting the hang of carburetors in general, and or anyone who's new to it really, I've got to learn this stuff from somewhere, hopefully I'll be that guy who was kind of helpful that time. Um, I'll ignore all this RTV, I was trying to trace out an air leak which actually turned out to be nothing to do with the carburetor, so go me. <laughs> right, if I open the throttle at the moment, watch this cam, where's trusty pen? Watch this cam in here, okay? You'll see it just flop lazily. Right, see that? And then back up now, okay? Right, that's how the second throttle opens, um, and they operate on vacuum, which is quite simple really. When the, when the engine's running, there's vacuum depression through here, and that pulls on this rod, like that, like pulls that rod upwards, which tries to make the whole thing swing. But obviously the first stage throttle's in the way. So basically, what that means is your vacuum-operated throttle is always waiting to go. It, it's ready for it whenever. Um, so I'll show you by sucking on this hose <laughs> on the internet. Wow. How my life's changed. Anyway, um, right, here we go. I'm going to open it up. See that? So, if your second stage throttle isn't working, check the vac hose to it. Failing that, check the diaphragm will hold vacuum because they can get perforated, they can just split with age. And that is literally it, guys. That's literally it. So, I'm going to do a video of a full rebuild on this, because this is the Peerberg off my baby, which is waiting on a downpipe at the moment. I've got to save my pennies. I've got to do all that boring adult stuff first, like rent and bills, and then I can get a downpipe and I can put my cylinder head back on, because the downpipe is chewed. Right, so anyway, until next we meet, I hope this has been informative. Please feel free to leave a comment. Um, if there's anything that I haven't explained well enough, or that you'd like to know that I haven't mentioned, um, by all means, I'm great to get feedback from you. I, I, I'm doing this to help people out, so that there's precious little point in me doing these videos if they're not helping people. So please do give me a shout. Right, well, thank you very much, guys. I'm going to go back to my Budweiser and enjoy my afternoon. Take care. <laughs>